What's up everybody, it's Charles, and today we're putting some new cooling fans on the Mark V GTI. During my initial inspection on the car, I found that the small cooling fan not only wasn't coming on, but it felt like it had a bit of resistance when you spun it. That means we definitely need to replace it. But because of the overlap and work, I'm gonna put both cooling fans on it. Reason being, when you have one cooling fan out, it's typically overworking the other fan. So we're gonna go ahead and do them both. In addition to that, on this setup, the large cooling fan also has the fan control module built into it, so it's kind of like a two-for-one deal on replacing the fans. Now, before you just slap 800 or so dollars worth of cooling fans in it, we want to do a little bit of diagnosis and see what the vehicle actually needs. It used to be the case that if you wanted to check both cooling fans, all you had to do was turn the air conditioning on and it would immediately pop both fans on. In this case, they do work very similar and you can do that as a starting point, but there are some other factors that play in that we really wanna make sure we check. The proper way to diagnose fan issues on this car is going to be with a scan tool and output testing the fans. That's gonna check the control circuit from the ECM to the fans. These fans are completely controlled by the ECM. They have a constant power, and the ECM is what provides the signal in order to turn them on. We're gonna start by checking fuses. This actually has two fuses, fuse SA3, on the SA panel right next to the vehicle battery under the hood. And it lists a couple of other options in the SB panel, the one behind the instrument cluster, SB38 or SB24 are potentially fan fuses. You really need to make sure you check those fuses before simply putting a fan on it. In our case, because the large fan worked, we know that the control circuit is good, we know power is good, and we know that ground is good. It's simply a case of we need to decide, is it the fan control module not telling the small fan to come on, or is it the small fan that's bad? And since it felt like there was some mechanical resistance in the fan, we know for sure that we need that small fan. Once you diagnose the fan failure, which is pretty straightforward, it's time to get the car up in the air and take the fan shroud out and replace them. In order to take the fans out, we remove the entire shroud from the vehicle. That shroud is held in with four T30 bolts. I like to start at the top. The one that's located on the driver's side is located right beneath the upper radiator hose. When it comes to the one on the passenger side, it's a little bit more tricky to find, but it's located right in front of where the AC line runs. Now our vehicle does have some core support damage, so the gap between the AC line and the shroud is much smaller than it's gonna be on a car with no damage. If that's the case for you, you can take a pry bar, and be very gentle, and just kind of push the core support forward. Just be careful not to break the core support, otherwise, well, you'll probably have a bad day. Once we have the top bolts loose, it's time to lift the car up so that we can work on it from underneath. You really do want to get the car as high up in the front as you can so that we have room to drop the fan shroud out from the bottom. And of course, as always, make sure you're using proper lifting techniques, either driving the car up onto ramps, using a jack and jack stands, and always be sure to chalk the wheels. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the belly pan. Once the vehicle's up in the air, I like to start on the driver's side and disconnect the electrical connector. The screw for this bottom driver's side is located right behind where the electrical connector was. Well, the bolt actually broke, so if before you start, if you see these are really, really oxidized, go ahead and get some new ones coming. The screw on the bottom passenger side is located right next to the boost pipe where it goes into the charge cooler. Nice thing about this one is there is tons of space to remove that. With all four bolts out, we have the shroud loose. All we have to do is simply walk it down. Just take note on the passenger side, you have an AC line you need to be aware of. And on the driver's side, you have a boost hose that you need to be aware of right here. Also, don't lay right underneath it. Now that we have our fans out of the car, we can see that here's our main fan. This is the one that has the module in it. It also spins nice and free. This one 
barely spins at all. So we know this one's bad. We're going to just go ahead and do them both since we have the shroud out. Whether you're doing the small fan or the big fan, the repair is basically the same. Fans are simply held in with six 10 millimeter nuts, one connector, and two wire loom clips. I like to just take a pocket screwdriver, pull the wire out. We need to pull the connector out. That has to rotate clockwise in order to come out. Unplug that. Now we can remove our small fan. Now we'll do our main cooling fan. Take our clips off, pull our connector out of its bracket. And we can simply remove the main cooling fan. Let's put our new fans in. Start with the small one. It only really goes one way. Time for the big fan with module. Run our wires up through, line our fan up, put our three nuts back on, put our wires in the channel where they belong. Ran into one little thing. Notice that this connector has a tab on it right here and there's no corresponding groove in the, uh, in the main fan cooling. So what we can do is we can file this off we can depin it and put the old connector back on. I think for my money, just filing this off is gonna be the easiest way to do it. Start by snipping that off, can file it down. All right, go ahead and plug your connector in, put our small fan wiring back in its channel, put our retention clip on. We'll do the same thing for the large fan, for the wiring to the vehicle. Put our connector in its retainer, put our metal retainer back on, and time to put it back in the car. Now, if these are missing or break or whatever, I have had to use zip ties. Just make sure you cut them so they don't hit the radiator or the fan. Now that our fans are all put together on the shroud, it's time to go ahead and install them. And we're gonna do it the same way we did when we took them out. We're gonna come up from the bottom. Be careful of the AC lines. Once we have the shroud set in place, we can go ahead and bolt it on. I like to start both bottom screws by hand. That way I can make sure the fan shroud is lined up with the radiator. Once you got them started and the shroud lined up, go ahead and snug them down. Oh, and be sure to plug your fans in. This is definitely something I have forgotten to do, which means you get to put the car back up in the air, take the belly pan back off, all just to plug the connector in. We'll put those two bolts that we took out and the top back in. Of course, before you complete this job, make sure you test drive the fans and be sure that they both work properly. If your check engine light was on, be sure to clear the fault. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. Big ups to FCP Euro for collabing on this Mark V GTI project. If you wanna see more Mark V videos, check that Mark V playlist out. As always, feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. Always appreciate that. I'll put links to all the tools and parts that we use today down in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.